in a world where every aspect of life is up for sale, have we commodified our very essence of humanity? Let's unravel a complex and controversial topic that touches the lives of billions, the commercialization of poverty. An increasing number of people in American cities are experiencing homelessness. Moreover, an increasing number of individuals are being forced to live on the streets due to this massive and difficult to solve issue. Large cities face a great problem in this regard. Cities are investing billions of dollars in a variety of initiatives to combat this. However, this significant issue has led to an odd situation where a full industry has emerged around homelessness with numerous businesses vying for government contracts to address it. This situation brings up a significant question. Are the businesses profiting from it genuinely dedicated to ending homelessness permanently? Let's take a peek at Austin where a new homeless housing project was recently launched. Despite just building 49 units, each one came at an astonishing cost of $739,000. In contrast, Los Angeles' funding for homeless programs increased 13 times in just 7 years from $63 million in 2015 to an astounding $880 million in 2022. However, despite all of the spending, there are 56% more homeless persons in Los Angeles. Why do you think that might be the reason for this? Does this mean that people are not able to afford the current home prices? And will there be a possibility for such people to look for rental properties? The results become much more startling when we examine particular programs in further detail, such as the Inside Safe Homelessness Reduction Policy. The goal of this program was to provide homeless persons with short-term hotel stays while they looked for long-term housing. This only assisted 1,463 people and cost $250 million in a single year. In just one American metropolis, that equates to $177,000 per person every month or over $200,000 per person annually. Thus, why do communities spend an increasing amount of money on homelessness without actually resolving the issue? If you take a closer look at the solution made by the community, we can see that there are three main causes. The first problem is the complex systems. There are many moving parts in the way we attempt to assist people experiencing homelessness. Numerous organizations and groups attempt to accomplish various tasks and occasionally their objectives diverge. Hence, things become costly and inefficient as a result. Next is the broken services. Although there are a variety of services available to homeless individuals, this disperses and reduces the effectiveness of the entire support system. Moreover, evaluating the overall effectiveness of these problems is a challenging task. Finally, homelessness is a significant political issue as well. To seem good, politicians frequently propose novel ideas or support tried and true approaches, but this doesn't always produce tangible outcomes. Despite the fact that these initiatives provide jobs, they don't always efficiently assist people experiencing homelessness. Since the homelessness situation is complex, a more straightforward and efficient strategy is required. We need affordable solutions that actually do the trick. The demand for innovative, considerate, and comprehensive solutions increases as the problem gets bigger. We need to consider more carefully how to resolve this complex problem. The next major problem that people face is the low wages. People are underpaid even though they work very hard. Hence, this is another factor that leads to poverty. According to a December study by the Congressional Budget Office, increasing the federal minimum wage to $17 per hour by July 2029 might result in wage increases for over 18 million Americans, but also result in the unemployment of over 700,000 people. Senator Bill Cassidy Arla, the ranking member of the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee, requested an analysis of the Raise the Wage Act of 2023, and this report was created in response. The bill was presented in July by Representative Robert Bobby Scott, ranking member of the House Education Committee, and Senator Bernie Sanders, chairman of the Health Committee. The measure would gradually raise some minimum wages for tipped workers and workers with disabilities in addition to raising the federal minimum wage gradually. Eventually, some minimum pay would be eliminated. The CBO concluded that impacted workers' total salary will rise between 2024 and 2033, increasing employers' labor costs. Reductions in employment for some would somewhat offset the benefits for greater pay for those working below 
at or just over the minimum wage. About 8.9 million workers whose estimated income during an average week in 2029 would have been below the minimums outlined in the bill would get a pay increase if the bill's $17 minimum wage were implemented. If not for the wage rise, 9.7 million additional workers would have had salaries during that typical work week that were marginally higher than the suggested minimums. According to Phil Swagel, director of the CBO, an independent organization that provides budget and economic data to Congress, wages for many of those workers would increase if the bill was enacted and the minimum wage rose as employers sought to retain some of the differences in pay that had previously existed among those workers. Have you ever felt that rewarding is enhancing your productivity? Maybe we're getting results in which we've been longing for for a long time, or we might get appreciated for the work we've done. In all these cases, we're rewarded in one way or another, thus boosting our productivity. The CBO analysis estimates that an increase in the federal minimum wage would also help 400,000 workers escape poverty. The average estimate is that 700,000 workers would lose their employment at the same time. The median forecast calls for a 500,000 worker loss. In this instance, the average surpasses the median due to a notable likelihood of substantial job losses, stated Swagel. He added that by 2024, the majority of workers who had been unemployed due to the higher minimum wage would still be seeking employment and would therefore be classified as unemployed. However, by 2029, half of the 700,000 jobless individuals who would have resulted from the measure would have left the labor field. According to Swagel, wage increases would drive up the costs incurred by businesses in providing products and services, which would then trickle down to consumers in the form of higher prices. This would ultimately lead to a decline in consumer spending and a fall in the employment of workers across the board. In response to a higher minimum wage, he stated, some firms would therefore shift their means of production toward using more machine and technology and reducing their employment of low-paid people. Does this mean we should be careful of more unemployment in the future? Do let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. The World Employment and Social Outlook Trends 2024 study by the International Labor Organization states that little over 5% of workers worldwide are unemployed. Although things are now better than they were before the pandemic, the ILO predicted that an additional 2 million people will be looking for work over the following year. The results of the UN agency are consistent with a recent World Bank analysis that was made public and shows that the world economy is expected to develop at its lowest rate in 30 years for the next five years. Additionally, the ILO reported that in addition to the uncertain future of the labor market, the bulk of the richest countries in the world had seen their living standards reduced due to inflation, which is currently declining in many major economies. According to the UN agency, the decline in living standards brought on by inflation is unlikely to be rectified swiftly. Gilbert Huangbo, the Director General of the ILO, issued a warning saying that increasing inequality and undermining efforts to attain social justice are caused by declining living standards and insufficient productivity paired with chronic inflation. What are your thoughts on the situation? Does more unemployment mean more homelessness in the future? Do share your thoughts in the comments down below. And that brings us to the end of today's deep dive into the complex world of poverty commercialization. But the conversation doesn't stop here. If this video opened your eyes to the reality of poverty commercialization, make sure to hit that like button. It helps us reach more people and spread awareness about issues that affect us all directly or indirectly. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss what we have coming up next for you. It's a story of resilience, creativity, and the power of collective action you definitely don't want to miss. Share your thoughts, your stories, and your ideas on how we can make a difference, because together, we can start building a future where poverty is not a business, but a problem to be solved. Thank you all for watching, and as always, thank you for being a part of our community. See you in the next video.